Good morning, everybody. I am Usha Sri, working as assistant professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. The topics which will be covered for today's session are application of biomaterials. In the two sessions which were discussed earlier, we have discussed about various biomaterials and their classifications, and also the importance of testing of biomaterials. Now, in this today's session, we will be discussing about applications of biomaterials. As discussed earlier, the course name is biomaterials and uh, in this, the main objective is to make the student understand about the various types of biomaterials, testing of these uh, biomaterials and also to understand various therapeutic and diagnostic applications. Coming to the outcomes, after the completion of this course, the student will be able to identify suitable biomaterials for a given application and also explain the concept of biocompatibility and the tissue material interactions and select a suitable material for hard tissue replacement as well as the soft tissue replacement. For today's session, we will be mainly focusing on the applications of biomaterials. In today's session, we will be discussing about various cardiovascular applications and the dental applications, wound closure applications and the ophthalmic applications. Coming to the cardiovascular applications, uh, as discussed about biocompatibility in the previous session, biocompatibility is the interaction between the any biological material as in the biomaterial. So, when the biomaterial is intended to use with respect to blood tissue, wherein the artificial material or the biomaterial is coming in contact with the blood tissue, concept of hemocompatibility comes into picture. Nevertheless, we select a biomaterial uh, based upon the uh, level of biocompatibility. Even though the material is biocompatible, we, there is a need for it for us to check whether the material is compatible enough with respect to blood tissue because any sort of infection or contamination which will be uh, resulted because of the tissue material interaction would be carried through the blood to the entire body. So, the infection which occurs at the tissue material interaction, there is a chance that if it is not hemocompatible, that is blood compatible, that infection will be carried throughout the body and it, the entire body gets infected. So, in order to overcome or avoid such adverse effects of tissue material interaction, when we take up the cardiovascular applications, it, it is uh, necessary for us to check whether the material is uh, blood compatible or hemocompatible or not. So, we will be discussing on the hemocompatibility aspects and uh, once uh, declared that the material is uh, very much compatible with respect to blood tissue, then we will be discussing about various application and various forms uh, in how many different ways we can use these uh, biomaterials for designing and uh, de um, uh, um, uh, developing the prototypes for the uh, medical applications pertaining to cardiovascular domain. Next uh, application will be focusing on to the dental applications and this, uh, this is a part of the heart tissue replacement. Um, in this, we will be very much specific with that of the um, tooth tissue and uh, the materials which supports for the uh, characteristics and properties of the tooth, tooth tissue will be of major interest and uh, what are the different types of uh, dental applications and uh, how we classify them based upon the application and uh, implantation uh, procedures that all we will be discussing in dental implantations. Another area where we can have soft tissue placement is the wound closure area. When we have a in, uh, incisional wounds or an accidental wound, the uh, tissue is exposed to the outer environment and there is a high chance that it gets uh, infected. So, in order to avoid the infection to enter into the body, we would be interested in closing that wound site. Nevertheless, even we apply any uh, sedative or um, any medicine to the wound site, it will be healed on its own by the physiological process. But in order to avoid the infection and contamination of the tissue because of the uh, bacteria and virus that enters into the body when the wound is open, uh, we will be um, looking for any wound closure agents which would be helping us to prevent such infections. So, in this we have several uh, modes of uh, wound closures uh, like we can use uh, suturing applications, we can apply staples, we can apply tapes, we can use uh, adhesives and all those. So, we will be discussing like what exactly each one of 
them is and um, how are they different from one another. And the other application we will be focusing is ophthalmic applications. In this ophthalmic applications, we will be majorly focusing on two areas. One is the corneal implants and the other one is the intraocular lens. Coming to the hemocompatibility, blood uh, biomaterial interaction means every interaction between an artificial device in the blood influenced by the flow conditions, contact duration and also the surface area and the implantation site. Like uh, we have in the cardiovascular system, blood will be carried through the blood vessels. If say suppose the material is being used as a stent material wherein uh, the stent will be placed inside the blood vessel in order to remove the uh, clot formation and the, make the uh, blood flow easily through the blood vessel. So in, in such a scenario, like for how long the stent is going to remain in the blood vessel, what is the surface area which is coming in contact with the blood tissue and what is the geometry of the uh, stent its shape and everything matters and uh, how far it is uh, facilitating the flow conditions, how are the flow condition um, uh, uh, dictating the uh, amount of contact with respect to that stent material as well as the blood tissue. All these things, all these uh, various factors will be uh, deciding whether the compatibility is sufficient enough with respect to blood tissue or not. If any, if there is any chance of infection, then and there it will be resulted in either cell lysis or coagulation of the uh, blood, uh, blood cells which will be further leading into clot and that itself will be obstructing the blood flow. So when a material results in any sort of clot formation that itself is a clear cut indication that that is not at all blood compatible. So the artificial uh, surfaces which absorb plasma proteins and then finally uh, result in the uh, platelet accumulation and, uh, and the addition of these platelets onto the blood vessel wall, all these things would be uh, resulting in the, in the damage of the blood cell tissue also. So platelet aggression and coagulation uh, factor activation are the major reasons for thrombus formation. Thrombus is nothing but a clot. When all the platelets get adhered to one another, they form a lump sort of thing in the blood vessels and they themselves will be obstructing the uh, blood flow and uh, which would, would finally result in the um, uh, death of the blood cell components. Materials that are used for blood contacting surfaces uh, are basically polymers because polymers are uh, of high biocompatible nature and they can easily accommodate to the uh, texture and the um, uh, soft tissue requirements of pertaining to the blood vessel. Major uh, materials which are used for blood contacting surfaces which are highly blood compatible are polyurethanes and the various sections of mimers, segmented polyurethanes and etc. Design considerations include reduction in the rejection of stagnation. So whenever there is a stagnation of blood, there is a maximum chance of platelet, uh, platelet addition and thereby the thrombus formation. So maximum we have to uh, take care that because of the implantation of the uh, biomaterial, there is no accumulation of blood at a single site. The blood should be flowing very smoothly. Once it is getting accumulated or getting stagnated at a single site, that will be resulting in thrombus formation. So this is how the blood vessel is and when we and here I am showing a stent being replaced in the blood vessel and uh, this is the flow of blood through the blood vessel which consists of different cell components, WBCs, RBCs, platelets and all those things. So uh, these platelets when we have been uh, looking at the uh, uh, addition of these platelets coming as a at a single area and getting lumps sort of thing, then they put together, get attached to one another and form coagulation. And this coagulation would further lead, when the coagulation happens more and more, then that would be finally leading into thrombus because of which there is a chances that the blood cells may die. And uh, this entire mechanism would be uh, majorly driven by the factors, coagulation factors. So when we study with the blood compatibility, like here biomaterial and blood interaction, we will be majorly focusing on the protein absorption. 
and these adsorption is because of several factors leukocytes that is the wbcs and coagulation factors which uh, enable the uh, platelets to come together and get added to one another and once they get added to them they form the uh, they get activated and they get, um, finally form a thrombus so this thrombus is of major threat to the uh blood vessel and blood flow because it obstructs the blood flow and when there is an obstruction the blood gets stagnated at that side and it will further lead to more thrombus and that is how the blood vessel gets finally blocked that would be the system effect so this thrombus will be leading into blood flow reduction and erythrocytes are rbcs even if they are getting damaged again they tend to get attracted towards one another and result in thrombus or else they will be killed wherein the rbc count will be decreased drastically so on the whole the final effect if the uh, material is not compatible with the blood tissue is that they occlude the blood vessel which is the systemic effect local effect is here thrombus formation which over a period of time gets more and more accumulated to result in a systemic effect of clogging the blood vessel which obstructs the blood flow and all the tissue which is being supplied by this blood vessel will be getting deprived of nutrients and oxygen supply and thereby it gets damaged so how do we test how do we test whether the material is hemocompatible or not in order to do so we have uh, various tests like in the previous session when we were discussing about uh, testing of our materials we have discussed about in vitro methodologies and in vivo methodologies wherein in in vivo we try to uh, pick up the uh, sample of the biomaterial and try to implant that in an animal species and check how far the metabolic changes are being occurring because of the implantation of that biomaterial since here we are interested in checking the interaction between the tissue material interface with respect to blood tissue as the host tissue we will be uh, using another methodology which is called as x y y what we do in x y y is we take the blood sample outside collect it in container and then we try to place the implant material into that and then try to study the amount of tissue that is the blood tissue material interactions so this is a way wherein we are not causing any cause of pain or discomfort to the patient but at the same time it will be helping us to understand the level of uh, blood compatibility the material offers to the patient and uh, this uh, type of methodology is called as x y y methodology in the in vitro uh, test basic laboratory test we will be studying the uh, use of uh, material with respect to human blood and in in vivo we will be including animal species wherein we implant the material into the animal and thereby check for the blood tissue and the material responses and thereby we come to a conclusion on the level of hemocompatibility and in x y o we eliminate all the problems of in vitro such as use of anticoagulants when we want the moment blood is drawn from the human body it gets accumulated or it gets attracted to one another and it forms a clot this process is called as coagulation as seen in the previous chart so this process if it is going to continue then we will not be able to assess the material interaction so for us to understand and uh, analyze what type of material reaction is going to take place after implanting the y material inside the blood stream we need to make the blood uh, flowing and we should not we should see that it is not getting coagulated for which we will be adding some anticoagulant agents such as heparin which uh, prevents the blood cells to get other to one another platelet addition will not be possible and thereby the blood will be flowing freely so x y o methodology or x y o testing methodologies are implemented on the uh, samples wherein we have this uh, continuous flow of blood in the stream we enable it to flow through the uh, conduits and thereby we can check the material performance in the flowing blood stream test should be a uh, more appropriate model and uh, conditions of contact of the device with blood during uh, during the application so when we are implanting it with respect to one particular application we should be very much specific with respect to the conditions conditions here may include like uh, the geometry the size surface area of contact time of contact everything 
So coming to the various applications wherein we use different uh, biomaterials uh, for uh, various cardiovascular implantable devices, uh, we have a list of uh, devices, uh, heart lung machine, artificial heart valves, vascular grafts, vascular axles, stents, catheters and cannulas, pacemakers and defibrillators, uh, intra-aortic balloon pumps that is called as IABP and cardiac assist device. So all these are the implantable cardiovascular medical devices which are used when we have different ailments pertaining to the heart and the vascular system. For example, pacemakers and defibrillators when the heart pacing action is being deteriorated, we try to uh, assist it with respect to an uh, uh, by means of an external device called as pacemaker. When the heart loses its own functioning of pacing the heart that is the pumping of blood, then we try to stimulate the heart muscle externally by using a pacemaker. So coming to the heart lung machine, this is heart lung machine. Uh, during any pacemaker implantations or any other uh, open heart bypass surgeries, we need to cut open the uh, heart which would be uh, resulting in lot of blood loss. So the best way of uh, making the <coughs> heart free from the blood supply would be to bypass the heart and lung that is the um, pulmonary circulation part entirely will be bypassed by uh, taking the blood from the heart and then by sending it through a oxygenator in order to perform the function of lungs and then again the purified blood will be sent back to the heart. So like this we will be able we will be able to bypass both the lungs and heart and thereby the performance of the entire purification of blood by the lungs and circulation of the um, pumping of the uh, blood by the heart both the functions would be done by the machine itself. So here important parameters where we need to check for the flow of the blood and whether the material is going to obstruct any um, characteristics of the blood flow or not would be majorly temperature and its uh, flow and the pressure with which it is flowing and uh, are there any air bubbles in the blood flow and uh, uh, after uh, sending it to the uh, oxygenation once the blood is purified and it is converted into oxygenated blood then we have to uh, infuse the heparin which is an anticoagulant because there should not be any clots in this pathway if any clot occurs in this pathway then the pure blood will not be supplied back to the body and thereby the body will be deprived of the pure blood and thereby it may turn to fatal outcomes. So these are the major parameters which we need to look into uh, heart lung machine. Now coming to the uh, heart valves. These are the vessel grafts, but when because of uh, the thrombus, the um, blood vessels get uh, occluded and thereby it will be restricting the blood flow further. Because of which the tissue which is uh, getting deprived of the nutrient and the blood supply would be uh, suffering and it may die. So in order to uh, avoid such situations, we will be cutting the part of it. We try to remove that clog in case if it is very thickened and wherein it cannot be removed by the process of IABP, then we will be going for anastomosis wherein we cut the part of the blocked blood vessel and try to replace it with an artificial blood vessel which we call it as vessel graft. So here these are the various other cardiovascular implantable devices. Coming to the artificial heart valves, there is a large market for the artificial heart valves because most of the time the mitral valves get blocked and because of uh, their obstruction uh, in the uh, blood flow, the systemic circulation will be affected. Systemic circulation here is the blood flow from the left ventricle to the entire body of the entire human body. So when this gets obstructed, most of your peripheral organs will be deprived of the blood supply and thereby there is a chance of various ailments which, which may result in the fatal condition of the uh, subject or the patient. So for artificial heart valves, we have two approaches. One is the mechanical heart valves wherein we will be using various Y materials to um, fabricate a synthetic heart valve and try to replace it in the place of the damaged valves such that we can regain the uh, action of that heart valve and the systemic circulation can be enabled for the patient. 
there is an another uh, there are few drawbacks with the mechanical heart valves like since we use metals for this uh, the problem of uh, hemocompatibility will be uh, the level of hemocompatibility given by the metals are poor when compared to the polymers but uh, for the compatibility aspect if we try to choose the polymers then they are very weak and they get uh, degraded very fast so for um, for a patient of uh, say suppose uh, of uh, an age group of 40 or so if we try to replace the uh, valve it may serve for a purpose of uh, for a duration of 5 to 10 years and later on again that will be degraded and again the problem reverts and again the patient need to go for a implantation again which is very tedious and very uh, painful for the patient and hence we go, uh, go for the uh, mechanical heart valves which are of uh, high strength and they can sustain for longer duration but only the problem is their compatibility effect so in a way if we are able to increase the hemocompatibility of the material which is being used for mechanical heart valves then this problem will be solved and thereby the patient can rely on only single implantation for the entire life so various models for artificial uh, mechanical heart valves are ball and cage, tilted disc, bileaflet and coming to the tissue valves wherein we include the uh, xenografts like the extracts from the animals such as cow and um, pig and uh, various human cadavers, human donors also uh, we can um, approach in order to uh, go for the uh, artificial valve replacements. So if you are taking in uh, extracts from the uh, human or a um, animal species then those will be called as the tissue valves artificial tissue valves. If you are going to fabricate it within an artificial material such as stainless steel, titanium, cobalt, chromium, alloys and all those things, then we will be go calling them as artificial mechanical valves. So these two sections put together would cater the entire requirement of artificial heart valve replacements. And an other major area where we have uh, biomaterial uh, applications for uh, cardiovascular system is the assist devices. Because of the four chambers, left ventricle is larger chamber and is under maximum load because it has to supply the blood to the entire body. Uh, usually there is a chance that it gets uh, weakened very fast and it will not be able to support the systemic circulation and thereby the supply to the peripheral uh, extremities of the human body will be deprived because of which the there will be different ailments pertaining to the muscular and the um, muscular disorders and also the sensation issues and all such issues will be there. So because of which, so the ventricles would be of major interest wherein we want to assist the systemic circulation. So this uh, um, in the heart, the these two are atria and these two will be ventricle. If these two ventricles are not working perfectly and they are affecting the systemic circulation part, then they need to be replaced with the ventricular assist devices. If only left ventricle is uh, used, then only left ventricular assist device will be called, uh, will be um, uh, used. And if both the ventricles are under, uh, um, uh, are damaged and they are not able to support the systemic circulation, then both need to be replaced. So this is how the ventricular assist devices will be uh, uh, helping the systemic, um, uh, systemic circulation and thereby the uh, enables the patient to maintain his um, homeostasis. Another area is the pacemaker and the defibrillator. Pacemaker and the defibrillator is not related to the vascular system as such but to the heart itself. When we call it as cardiovascular system, both cardio is heart and vascular is the blood vessel system. So put together we call it as cardiovascular system. So pacemakers and defibrillators are those medical devices which are used to replace the function of the heart itself. There is a specific function of uh, SA node which stimulates the heart to uh, have that pumping action. So the open and closure of these uh, valves and the contraction and relaxation of the chambers put together work in a synchronous fashion and thereby enable the systemic circulation and the pulmonic, uh, pulmonic cir uh, circulation in a rhythmic manner. That is how we have a rhythmic PQRST ECG waveform which defines the activity of the heart. If in case any of the atrial muscle is not able to do so and it is not able to open and close properly, then we need to address the um, problem by using pacemaker and 
defibrillator. So pacemaker is a metallic casing. In the metallic casing, we have a basic pulse generator. The pacing action of the natural heart is lost or desist. In that case, we have to replace it with an artificial one. So a uh, pulse generator will be used. We have to check for the uh, case history of the patient. What is his day-to-day uh, -day requirement? for the blood circulation and uh, at what heart rate uh, 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 the heart has to pace for, to satisfy his day-to-day -day activities that will be analyzed and thereby a heart rate will be decided for a uh, fixed rate and then that rate will be set for the uh, pulse generator and then that will be applied onto the heart. So we implant the pacemaker here and then the lead wires will be pacing the heart here. So that is how pacemakers and defibrillators will be helping. Defibrillators are also uh, the same uh, electronic uh, devices which would be uh, helping to restore the rhythmic pacing of the heart. So that uh, those are the different way, uh, cardiovascular applications. Now coming to the dental applications. Dental applications, as we look into the uh, applications, we basically classify them as the endo-osseous, trans-osseous and sub -osseous. endo -osseous are those which would be uh, seen from the outer end. So, this artificial tooth would be of endo-osseous application. And then uh, sub is the one which will be going into the gums. So, in order to situate the artificial tooth, it will not just be located just by fixing it onto the upper uh, end. So it has to have a firm base underneath it. So the ridges and the abutments and the base material which holds this artificial tooth in place, those will be of subperiosteal. And the one which anchor this support from the deeper roots which would be termed as transosseal. So these are the three different types of dental applications. So I'll try to explain that with respect to an example. So here this is an RCT example. RCT is root canal treatment. So if the natural tooth is suffering from a deeper end, a deep end uh, tissue damage wherein it is not able to allow the chewing process and thereby uh, the patient uh, comes with a um, complaint of pain or discomfort while he is chewing then we will be taking a, an x-ray will be taken uh, in order to assess the level or the severity of the damage whether it is onto the tooth part any cavity is there which is being uh, lodged by any food particle which got infected and thereby it is causing a pain or is it at the gums level where the gums getting are uh, getting infected and which are not allowing him to chew and thereby he is getting the pain or is it the anchoring grip of the tooth into the transosseal play, uh, uh, location wherein the roots are not um, uh, proper and they are getting uh, infected and that is how it will be resulting in dislodgement of the tooth. So uh, it may be at any level. So an x-ray will be helping the uh, clinician to understand at what level the damage occurs and once he finalizes at which area the damage has occurred then he will be giving an appropriate replacement. So this is the basic construction. So here this is the basic screw like if it is at the root level wherein the anchored tips of the tooth are getting damaged any nerve damage which supplies the sensation for the patient that would uh, that is damaged then we need to uh, uh, re replace that part when first we have to clean out that infected part and that uh, debris of the infected bone bony tissue that is a tooth uh, tissue and then that place need to be uh, filled up with a screw and that screw would be acting as the crown. So this is the basic support which on top of it we would be giving an abutment in order to locate an artificial tooth. So like as I discussed endosteal, subperiosteal and transosteal. If the damage is at the root level 
and then it is resulting in final complete dislodgement of the tooth then we have to support the patient with an artificial tooth from the root itself. So then at the uh, transosseal part we will be uh, implanting a screw made up of uh, stainless steel onto that we give an abutment We call that as abutment which is a support on, onto which we will be locating the artificial tooth. So the combination of transosteal, superiosteal and the endosteal put together three parts would be resulting in a complete root canal treatment. So that is how the dental implants will be working out. So in order to uh, facilitate ease of chewing and without any pain and dis discomfort with the artificial tooth we will be enabling uh, the materials which uh, are highly biocompatible with respect to the tissue here because when we are taking it at three different levels of it then the biocompatibility level needs to be judged at all the areas onto the endosseous region the saliva which is coming into the fish the tongue which uh, regularly comes in contact with that and the food particles which are being cured with that artificial tooth all of them that artificial tooth have to be compatible enough with all such um, uh, all all these materials then at the abut abutment stage the crown or the uh, the crown which is having the firm grip for this abutment should have a perfect fixation and then only then the the cap or the artificial tooth which is uh, placed onto the abutment as a cap would be uh, fixed properly and thereby while chewing it will not be getting dislodged. So the level of materials when we think of going for an RCT or an uh, artificial tooth replacement would be like onto the transosteal part it is a firm screw metallic screw which is usually a stainless steel screw which is highly biocompatible and give a firm grip onto the um, root part. Then we go with the abutment made up of a ceramic which is a metal cum polymer combination of it uh, of which we will call, we'll be calling it as the zirconia and the alumina. Both these two are the uh, ceramic materials which can be used for the abutment fabric fabrication. It being a ceramic, its high biocompatibility level is high and therefore uh, since it is of uh, ceramic behavior, it will be able to withstand all the mechanical stress occurring on that because while chewing the food, there is a continuous stress being imposed onto the abutment. So that material should be mechanically strong enough to withstand that stress. So these materials are highly successful in withstanding such uh, stresses and are widely popular in the commercial market. And uh, coming to the endoosseous, that is the artificial tooth, the final one which we look at it. We want it to look as similar to that of the other tooth. So there again the ceramics will be coming into picture, metal to ceramics. We can go for any material which will be giving an aesthetic look to the patient and wherein the patient feels very ease of comfort and uh, ease of um, appearance for, with respect to the artificial tooth. So the, uh, that is about the dental implants and uh, coming to the metals, the different metals here used are stainless steel as I told you, gold in age old days as we know many of them used to have a gold coating onto their metals. So it is a cap of gold which will be given tantalum and titanium these are the soft metals which provide ease of chewing and they can, uh, they can withstand the continuous stress which is being imposed onto the tooth and now coming to the ceramics part zirconia and alumina are the popular materials which would be uh, offering uh, advantages such as high biocompatibility, highly mechani mechanically strong and uh, no corrosion and uh, they have uh, ease of uh, tissue adaptation, they get easily healed up faster and all such applications. And when we come to the polymers, like apart from the RCT, the other applications where we think of polymer uh, polymers being used as biomaterials are like your uh, if you have a cavity in the tooth, then you will be going for a filling such that there is no further deformation of the tooth and uh, you can uh, retain your own natural tooth. So for those temporary applications or short duration applications, we will be using polymers such as uh, polymethyl, methacrylate, uh, polytetrafluoroethylene, 
polyethylene, polysulfane, polyurethane and also polyether ketone. So, these are the various polymers which would be helping in the short duration applications wherein it, most of the healing process will be involved. Any damage in the tissue, any uh, temporary uh, tissue regeneration into the uh, tooth is required. Then we will go with the uh, polymers which are used as dental implant materials. Now coming to the tissue adhesive. Tissue adhesives come under the category of soft tissue replacements. So, these uh, re replacements would be majorly required wherein we have an irregular tear onto the tissue part. If it is an incisional cut during surgeries which the doctors perform, then those cuts are in line and we can use very well use sutures to close them. But if it is an accidental tear wherein the rupture of skin surface is uh, very drastic and to uh, a very deeper uh, level, then we will not be able to align those open ends of the uh, wound and then apply the suture. So, in such scenario, we will be uh, making use of tissue adhesives. Adhesives is a glue structure usually made up of hydrogels which has uh, two major properties. One is the adhesive, uh, adhesive property and the cohesion property. So, when we have say suppose this is the skin layer, this is the screen layer and we have a wound site here and these two are the borders of the wound. So, this cohesive forces are, are, are the gluey structures which would be acting on it and these uh, ad adhesive forces uh, which uh, helps these gluey structure to fix onto the wound site and then thereby does not get slipped off or it does not get removed from the wound site and uh, makes the healing very faster. So, that is how the tissue adhesives are used. So, Main advantage of tissue adhesives is any irregular cuts, irregular tear of the skin uh, or any tissue can be easily handled and closed by means of tissue adhesives. Uh, sutures like uh, if it is a regular cut, in, uh, intentional uh, incisions are made uh, such as uh, surgeries and all those things, then it is very uh, safe enough to go for sutures. Uh, apart from that, staples are also used, but staples are used to close the wounds pertaining to your visceral cavities like C-sections and all those things, wherein thick muscle layers will be involved, wherein neither we can't go for the adhesives nor we cannot go for the sutures and all those things. So, the, uh, at those areas, we go for the staples. And tapes are for the small incisions which are ir irregular in shape, wherein um, alignment of those uh, open wound ends will be very difficult. So, there we will be able to apply it, but the length of the cut should be very small. If for a very lengthy cuts, we can't go for the tapes. That itself will uh, tear because of the pressure acting on the skin surface. So, coming to the materials used for tissue adhesives, like this is a damaged tissue and uh, here we have a damaged site and we apply a tissue adhesive here and uh, basic components of tissue adhesive which results in those adhesive and uh, cohesive forces are the gelatin, cryo, uh, uh, cyanoacrylates and fibrin and biological glues. So, here uh, these origins are mainly used. Basically, cyanoacrylates are of uh, major interest because they have sufficient am amount of uh, mechanical strength in order to stick onto the surface and retain there for longer durations. And uh, compared to uh, when coming to the fibrin and gelatin, those are the uh, biomolecules present in the body itself. So, they are highly biocompatible and they can get easily adapted to the wound site and thereby serve the purpose of closing the wound. Into the uh, emerging trends where we have uh, additional uh, uh, adhesives, tissue adhesives derived from other origins such as octopus, slug, mussels and all those things. Like we have a derived extracts of various other species that can be used as a glue structure that can be um, implanted onto the wound site as a sealant, wound closure agent. 
So that is how like uh, tissue adhesives have various applications like uh, you soft tissue applications such as the blood vessels. We have any openings into the blood vessel then we go for these tissue adhesives. Since uh, skin substitutes any of the skin part of the skin is being damaged or burnt or uh, um, ruptured in any uh, irregular fashion even then we go and go for the tissue adhesives. Drug delivery systems is an, another area where we can uh, embed the drug material into the adhesive part and we can rather Rather than swaying in the sed it as a sedative, we can apply it as a gluey structure onto the external applications and then that drug will be used in uh, faster healing of the wound sites. Scaffolds are also of same application wherein like we can think of like bandage materials and all those things rather than going for a bandage one and then uh, using that just a gluey structure which uh, in the form of adhesive can be applied onto the wound site which would be helping to absorb the fluid accumulation there and then deliver the drug into the wound site and harder tissue like bone replacements also for bone uh, repair and bone any mm, bone has been ruptured and uh, it needs to be healed very faster then we go for such adhesives. Uh, disadvantages with this is all are polymer based basically tissue adhesives are polymer based so their lifetime is very small then they are uh, very weak coming to the mechanical strength and uh, since uh, every wound site will be oozing out uh, several fluidic uh, secretions so these uh, polymers should be hydrophilic in nature so that they will be absorbing it and uh, if that does not occur they will be resulting in swelling edema in other way, words it is called as and thereby the stability of wound healing or the rate at which the wound heals get varied with respect to the uh, type of adhesive and its uh, adaptability to the wound site. Coming to the ophthalmic applications, we have uh, different applications, uh, contact lens, intraocular lens and uh, epithelial uh, layer replacements and uh, scleral buckling uh, materials and uh, uh, viscous polymer solutions in order to place the ocular lens into the site. It will be used as a supportive material for the placement of the um, intraocular lens. So, here we will be majorly focusing on two areas, corneal implants and the uh, intraocular implants. In corneal implants, we have three layers, endothelium, stroma and epithelium. Epithelial is the outer layer which is exposed onto the environment and hence there is a maximum chance for it to get contaminated and thereby get deteriorated. In when the uh, layer uh, gets deteriorated to a maximum extent wherein the vision is, able, uh, is getting affected, then we try to replace that with an new epithelial layer and stroma is a completely hydrated uh, part of the cornea which gives uh, uh, more uh, cushioning effect and um, protects the internal structures such as the lens and retina and all those things. So here the visual perception which would be uh, possible uh, only when the uh, uh, light rays from the uh, object will be reflected onto your lens part. So, the directionality of those rays onto the lens part would be perfectly accommodated based upon the hydration of this cornea. So, when the uh, hydration gets affected because of its uh, swelling behavior or, ne or any abnormal growth of the tissue into that uh, hydrated part or of stroma or any vascularization is getting interrupted because of uh, additional growth and all those things then the visual uh, perception will be lost because that will not be uh, focused on to the lens part and the um, visual perception of the image onto the retina will be damaged and we will not be able to perceive the image properly. So, for this we will be going for corneal replacements, epithelial replacement and the endothelial replacements. As I told you like corneal replacements they can be uh, used for uh, like uh, which one they can be extracted from other donors human donors there are um, human donors who donate their uh, cornea and uh, even in case of cadavers also soon after the death we can preserve it and then make use of those uh, cadaver donor uh, donated uh, corneal implants also. Coming to the epithelial layer, most of the time like these layers are the uh, basic uh, layers which need to support for the cornea and also protect the inter inner, inner hydration of the cornea. So, the cyanoacrylate uh, adhesives materials will be used as these epithelial layers 
like the one we discussed in tissue adhesives and these gluey structures would be uh, preserving the uh, hydration of this trauma and thereby enables the visual perception. Coming to the endothelium, like uh, they are not uh, successful on the long term usage, but uh, silicon rubber is the major material which is used to uh, control and preserve the hydration of this cornea. Coming to the contact lens, contact lens like the visual perception or the focusing part of the uh, light rays onto the lens and then processing that onto the retina. These are two different parts. The lens when they acquire the data, visual data that need to be sent and approved to the retina and at the retina it will be processed as an image and that information will be sent to the brain. So if uh, because of uh, BP or uh, glaucoma or cataract or any uh, other uh, eye disorders, if the corneal uh, area is not able to support the visual perception or the focusing of the light onto the lens part, then the vision will be either blurred or they will not be able to see or it will maybe be myopia case wherein short, or short sightedness or long sightedness, all these problems will be there. So, if such problems occur, then we have to change the lens part. So, when we go for the replacement of lens, then the most uh, easily uh, preferred by the uh, subjects are the contact lens rather than wearing the specs uh, and maintaining them for longer duration, which is which doesn't give much comfort to the patient. So, we go for the contact lens. So, major properties used for uh, this uh, um, is, is they should be optically transparent and uh, they should have mecha adequate mechanical strength in order to support, uh, get supported and fixed onto the lens location part. They should be resistant to the UV radiation and uh, good uh, possess good wettability because hydration is very important in the visual perception and then it, it should not get contaminated in any form. So, based upon the type of material we use, lenses are classified into two different categories, hard contact lens and the soft contact lens. Hard contact lens uses PMMA which is polymethyl methacrylate which is a very highly crystalline, highly mechanically stable enough and has high mechanical strength. But the problem with this is it is very rigid. In order to provide a very soft texture of the lens part, we will be um, using silicon which is a merge of siloxane and this uh, methyl methacrylate which would be finally resulting in silicon. So, when we use such materials and also hydrogels then those are called as soft co uh, contact lenses. They will be very smooth, very soft and the ease of application, ease of retaining them for longer durations is also uh, highly appreciable for the subject. Now, coming to the lens part, if the lens they themselves are getting clogged because of cataract, usually cataract is the major clinical indication where we go for the intraocular lens. The complete clogging of the lens would be making a complete blind, um, uh, patient's vision uh, to be stopped and the, it may result in complete blindness. So, in such cases, we go for artificial uh, lens replacement, intraocular lens replacement. So, these lens would be a complete replacement of, to, of the total lens part, the damaged or degenerated or clogged lens would be removed by surgical means and then an implantable uh, intraocular lens will be implanted onto that area and then it will be fixed up with the haptics. So, this, this is the surgical, surgical uh, removal of damaged lens and then this is the implantation of the uh, artificial intraocular lens. There are two parts, hapten and the optics. So, optics will be involved, optics would be involved with the lens part and hapten are the struts which hold this lens into the um, pupil area and then get it firmly fixed there such that irrespective of whatever is the eyeball movement, it will not be moving from its place. So, these two are the major parts and each has uh, their own importance in making the vision very much clear for the uh, subject. So, coming to the materials used for intraocular lens are optic materials which are used for lens are uh, non-foldable rigid intraocular lens which includes 
polymethyl methacrylates those are, that is the PMMA and when we add methyl methacrylate with siloxin that will be re uh, resulting in sil uh, silicon and uh, which will be hydrophilic in nature and also hydrophobic when we don't want much of hydration to be required. Hydrogels are best suitable materials which would be giving the soft texture proper hydration, good wettability, good oxygen permeability for the uh, eye and uh, they are highly successful. Only the drawback with the hydrogels is since they are completely purely polymer based they are weak and they will not be able to withstand much of mechanical stress. So if anything uh, very uh, um, rigid uh, occurs or um, gets um, contaminated with respect to this lens, it gets stirred off and that will be a final failure of the implantation. So, if we are able to address that point, then hydrogels are the best suitable materials for the optics. And now coming to the haptics, since they have to hold the lens in part irrespective of the eyeball movements, we need a polymer based highly crystalline compound which will be giving high mechanical strength. So, hence polymethyl methacrylate, polyvinyl difluoridine uh, fluoride, polyamides and polypropylenes are the major materials which will be used for these haptic materials. So, these are the various applications and the biomaterials and the level of compatibility with respect to each application. All the points are discussed with respect to different domains of applications of both hard tissue replacements as well as soft tissue replacements. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.